Hello, my name is Mad Max. Today I wanted to... What? Oh. <laughs> you are probably distracted by my Guinness World Record certificate. I can understand that that would be distracting. It's quite amazing. SMI, actually it says so right on the certificate. Officially amazing. Hmm, yes. Let me just put this away. I don't know why it happened to just lie right here on my table where everyone could see it. Anyway, welcome back to Let's Build Diaries. Today I want to talk about the practicalities of actually building something like this. So this is going to be the ALU. It's going to be the 8-bit ALU and it's medium complex. As you can see a lot of ICs, uh, as you can see a lot of pins. By the way, my soldering is horrible, I know, I'm sorry. But as you can see a lot of pins, so a lot of things can go wrong really easily with it. So let me talk you through a couple of my decisions with this design. First of all, you see that I did not solder the ICs in, I used sockets. That's really important, you really want to use sockets instead of just soldering the ICs in. And there are multiple reasons for it. If you put the wrong IC in the wrong spot, if you soldered it in, you have to unsolder it. It's really bad. But also, if you solder in the sockets, you cannot break the ICs by soldering. You can very easily break the ICs when you solder them in uh, themselves. This is off, by the way. Uh, let's say this would be an IC, and I would just you know, hold this on here for too long, then the IC would overheat, and the, uh, the transistors in the inside would just break. Right. Still, even with the sockets, you want to minimize heat, and you do this by soldering opposite ends first. Right? You start here, then you go here, then you go here, then you go here, so it has time to cool down. And when you solder things like an opto switch, you really have to let them cool down. Right? You solder, and then you wait for 30 seconds, and then you solder again so they don't break. Anyway. So why is this laid out the way it is? If we're using this wire method, it doesn't really matter where we put which IC, right? Well, it doesn't matter for how it works, that's correct, but it matters for you. <laughs> because if you build it and it's just chaos, you will make way more mistakes and it will be way more difficult for you to actually troubleshoot. So what I did is I grouped things together that made sense. I have the output right here, so I have my four OR gates. My four OR gates will go here. And then I have my eight AND gates over here that are connected to the enable lines of my decoder, which is this. Then I have the enable lines for A and B and the inverter, which is this. You can actually see there are those little blue lines around it. So those three, uh, those two are enable lines for A and B. This is the A inverter. Again, enable lines for A and B. A inverter. And then all the rest is basically in between. And the layout you see here is basically the same I have here. This is the prototype that I built on a breadboard. And although it looks really different, it really isn't. I have my decoder down here. Ah, I have my decoder down here. Then I have the inverter and the enable lines for A and B here. Ah, yeah, I have them here on the left side as well. Then I have my logical and arithmetical unit in the middle, yeah, same here. Then I have the end gates with the enable lines all the way to the round. right, yeah, same here. So it is the same, so I can go back and forth between them to uh, find out what is supposed to be connected to what, although, you know, I use eagles so I actually can see which is supposed to be connected to what. Next up, when I turn it around, you see that there are some of those silver wires soldered in place, that's a power supply and that I began in one corner and that I only inserted two ICs by now. That is really important. If you have a project like this, you cannot just go ahead and put everything in place and solder every wire in place. That is chaos, okay? That is really, really, really bad because you will make mistakes, right? Maybe you're really bad at soldering like I am and you accidentally connect two pins that are next to each other and you don't notice. That's really bad. Right? Maybe you just solder a wire to a different place. Again, that happened by, for me as well, and I just have like eight, eight wires so far. So what you want to do when you build something like this, and basically what you have to do with every complicated project, and it doesn't matter if it's electronics like this, or a big software project, or you're building a website, or you're setting up a server, or 
you're building a table or renovating your house. When you have a big complicated project, what you need to do is you need to break it down into sub problems, smaller in problems that are easier to solve. Right? Don't just try to do everything at once. Break it down into smaller sub problems. You see that I have those blue lines which represent different parts of the ALU. Those also represent basically my build order. First thing I did is I started with the power supply. Once I had the power supply in place, I got my multimeter and I tested every single, every single pin, whether it was connected right. I looked it up in Eagle where I see which pin is connected to what. And I also have one of these that's really handy. You should print out a piece of paper like this that shows you all the ICs you're using and the pin allocation. So I used this and to, to make sure, yeah, you know, ground is at the lower left corner for every single IC. And then I made sure that it indeed was and that ground was not connected to any other pin. So I tested that, then I tested it again, then I tested it again. And then I was sure that the power supply works fine. So if I have any problems later down the road, I know it's not the power supply because I tested the power supply. I know that it works. So the power supply is off the list. Then I went ahead and I started wiring the decoder. This part right here. And again, I tested that every wire and every connection was at the right place, that those two, that those two control bits actually connect to the right uh, to the right pins of those two ICs, and that the output is actually as predicted. And then I tested it again, and then I tested it again, and then I tested it again. And now I'm sure that my decoder works. So now my power supply works, and my decoder works. So if I have any problems down the road, I know it's not my power supply or my decoder. And I just go ahead like this, okay? I take one small chunk at a time, build it, make sure that it works, make really sure that it works, make really, really sure that it works, and then I go on to the next one. So now I know the decoder works. So the next thing I will do is this. So to end gates, XOR gate, A and B enable, and uh, the inverter for A. And I will make sure that this works, right? I will wire it, then I will test it with the multimeter a couple of times. Once I'm sure that works, then I'm going to insert the actual ICs, Task versus the output is as predicted. I actually, uh, oops, just got new switches. So I actually can input stuff <laughs> better now. And only when I'm 100% sure it works, I'm going to go to this. Once I'm 100% sure this works, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this and so on and so forth one small chunk at a time. Do not try to get everything right in the first try, you, you won't be able to. If you just jump ahead and sold everything in place and put all the ACs in and then it doesn't work, which it won't, it's almost impossible to do this without any mistake, then it will be extremely difficult to troubleshoot. Think about how complicated this would look if you would have this everywhere, okay, connecting everything. Wires everywhere, it's really difficult to actually see for example, right here, I had a problem that two pins were connected because one of the wires, uh, one little, one little uh, copper strand connected to the next uh, pin. Really difficult to see, even with only those couple wires right here. But now I know this works and I never touch it again. So that is the way you should tackle complicated things like this. So that wraps it up for this episode of the Let's Build Diaries. The next regular Let's Build 8-bit computer will come out next Wednesday. My goal is to release one every Wednesday from now on until it's done. And it will be about memory. So it will be about latches and maybe RAM. Indeed, I just got a couple of those. 4076, which are 4-bit tri-state registers. So every single one of those can actually save 4-bit of information. So I'm going to explain to you how those actually work. My name is Matt Max. Thanks for watching this episode. And see you next time.